My name is Betty Romu and I'm from Brain Injury Services in Northern Ontario and our project um, title was Rehabilitation Goal Attainment Through Social Leisure Activities. So if you can go to the next slide, I'd like to introduce the team. Okay, we're just trying to get to the next slide, yeah. Honestly, I think it's the computer, which is really old. Yeah. I'll put up the problem, mic. I did print our 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 um, information, so I don't have it in front of me. I was kind of relying to have it up on the screen, so I don't even know what the next slide is. I can tell you. Just give me one second here. Okay, so it's it's your team. So uh, Lori was your executive sponsor, and you're yes. the process owner. Yes, and, and then, then we have a, yeah, uh, Tanya Spivak. She's a supervisor with our program. Tara Kidd. She's also a supervisor with our program. And then we have Cherie Spud, rehab facilitator. Kathleen Fleming, uh, rehab support worker. Sapel Sousa. Uh, rehab support worker and Ben Colkman. He's not here today, but uh, he's a rehab facilitator with one of our community programs. So, okay. and your next slide is your story. If you want to tell your story, yeah. Is there any way that we can minimize this screen so that I can print off our report so that I have it in front of me? Because, like I said, I didn't print this because I was counting that I'd be using the, the information up on the screen. Um, Beth, can we switch out your computer with this thing? Okay, um, if you give us a second, I'm just gonna pull up the, the webinar. Another option would be if you wanna try giving me mouse control, I can try to click through it from this end. We can try, just the mouse is really uh, not being a good mouse today. <laughs> Very bad mouse. <laughs> I'm just going to try to pull the webinar up on my screen. Are we at go to meeting or webinar? Uh, webinar. Can you pull up the, um, I think it would be, maybe this one, the instance. I think it's the most to do anything. It's okay. frozen right now. Okay, I need the address. Mike, can you send me the address for the webinar? Then we'll be able to pull it up on my machine. Uh, yeah, I can do that. If you, if you make me, um, Make me presenter. I can pull it up here really quick. That's I'm not trying to. Oh, this is not an older computer. There's, there's. Oh, okay. Uh, we seem to be live again. So there you go. Rita, can you see that? It's Betty. Betty, sorry. Can you see that? Yes, sorry. I'm, I'm actually. I was able to uh, somehow. I was able to see the bottom of the screen came up. So I'm printing it as we speak. If we have any additional technical issues, I'll have my back. Okay. Copy. So I apologize that I didn't have that ahead of time. So I did want to share our, our backstory. So Visno's McKellar site uh, is a newer program and we first opened in February 2015 with six clients moving into the site. And we Betty, immediately... Betty, I think you might have on your computer, uh, you might not be muted. If you could go to your sound in the bottom right hand corner. Uh, it's for your speakers. If you could put that all the way down to the end, to the left. It is all the way down to the end. Oh, to the left. Is that better? 
Yeah, we're not getting the feedback now. Is that better for you as well? Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you just fine. Okay, should I start from the beginning then? No, go ahead with your story. That's what I mean, starting with this. Did you hear any of my story yet? We we did. It just you had some background noise, so okay. I just wanted to get rid of the background noise. Okay. So, yes. So when uh, we first opened our, our new program, we immediately started observing challenges with um, being able to provide um, social leisure opportunities to our clients. Um, and this was mainly due to um, barriers around accessing transportation and being understaffed. Um, the individuals um, that resided, the, the first six, um, many of them were considered um, full care, um, which required specialized transportation, so it was um, very difficult to access the community. Um, the bulk of the staff time was spent providing care, which left little to no time to, to focus on social leisure opportunities. Uh, last year, June, we um, had six more clients move in, so the total of 12, that's how many reside at our site. Um, and we continue to observe challenges um, over the months after the expansion. Um, you know, the staff were learning routines. They were trying to build rapport with um, the new individuals. We had some new staff, so they were trying to as well um, catch up. Um, and then just everybody kind of adjusting to a different way of doing things because, you know, the staff were used to having six residents and then now 12, so things had to change. Um, so again, providing social leisure opportunities was not necessarily the primary focus during this time. And we definitely began noticing an increase in responsive behaviors and elopements with the clients. And this dissatisfaction was verbalized consistently to staff by our, our clients. And it was also communicated through the family satisfaction survey that we did. Um, there was also a lot of discord and negativity observed amongst staff. Um, and as part of our accreditation process, there was a work-life pulse survey completed, and our site had the highest number of dissatisfied staff in the organization. So that's how we know that there was um, some discord amongst staff. Um, and there was a lot of staff turnover. Um, it was evident that something needed to be done, so we were trying to figure out how best to tackle the issues we were experiencing here at McKellar. Um, so the Bizno leadership team met with the EQIP team and collectively we agreed that the McKellar site would be the ones that would most benefit from participating in this project. The next slide, if you can. No? Okay. So our next slide um, talks about our, our problem statement. And our problem statement is that in February 2015, McKellar Place noted that client needs were not being met specifically in the psychosocial and social leisure domain. That this has impacted clients, family, staff, the agency, and the client's community. This was noted within the family satisfaction surveys, responsive behaviors through incident reports, progress notes, as well as occurrences of elopement of individuals. Can you still hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, good. Okay. And our aim statement uh, was to increase the client satisfaction with social activities as measured by the percent of individuals who said like to the type of variety of activities available. It was, this was a question that was on the social activity satisfaction survey. So we wanted to increase it from 50% to 75% by September 30th, 2018. So our next slide just speaks a little bit to our diagnostic journey. So as a team, we completed uh, the fishbone exercise and uh, we subsequently completed another uh, fishbone to be more client-centered. Uh, we also did a, a process, I will show the, the, the fishbone in, a, in, a, in another slide maybe. Uh, we did a process map um, from the clients and staff perspective as far as what uh, a day in the life of uh, a shift here at, at like a, the whole day at McKellar, what that looks like from the client's perspective and from the staff perspective. And then uh, as a means of collecting additional data, we did a client satisfaction survey um, to determine if what we were doing was in fact actually increasing their satis 
action. And um, we also implemented house meetings, uh, a leisure calendar that uh, indicated in-house and community um, activities that were planned for the month. Uh, some of the things that we were surprised to learn during this process uh, was the type of feedback that was generated by our clients and the ideas that they were sharing were, were very interesting. Uh, the satisfaction survey provided an opportunity for them to open up um, their communication and find out what was important to them. I think we're a little bit too far ahead of the presentation. The, uh, some of the new things that we learned, was, you know, especially from the nonverbal clients, uh, they had a, a means of, of communicating what their desires were. Uh, it was rewarding to see the increase in satisfaction and reduction of responsive behaviors. Uh, so we learned that sometimes just the simple activities um, that don't require a lot of staffing or resources can be enjoyable and not just the big elaborate activities. I think sometimes we were focusing on, you know, the big picture stuff, but something as simple as, you know, going for a walk or what have you was, was meaningful. Uh, when completing the process mapping, it was interesting to see that the client and staff perspectives were similar and that the client understood when our busy times were uh, during the day. So that the insight was quite interesting to see. Um, everyone found the fishbone exercise to be helpful and a valuable tool to use for future challenges. As a team, we'll, we'll you know, I think um, we'll be more um, interested in doing something like this to, to maybe dig down to future problems. And even somebody on the team did, did what on a personal level, which we won't share. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so the next uh, slide speaks to our, the process mapping that we did. Uh, on the one side here, it has the, the, the staff perspective. And again, it's from um, a day. Uh, it, I, this slide's not showing the, the full day. I think it just shows or does it? Oh yeah, it does. It does. I know it's the, it's very small, but it just kind of breaks down what staff do on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, from this, we were able to see where some of the pain points were, and it was interesting to note that that's where some of the responsive behaviors were happening because um, staff were were quite busy during that time, and um, it was difficult to attend to some of those immediate needs of the of the clients. And then the other, um, we had the client come in and. Uh, share what their day looked like and uh, so that was from their perspective and, and, and like I mentioned previously it was interest, interesting to see that they did um, have many similarities. So the next slide. So this was our um, fishbone exercise that, that I had stated is more on um, being client-centered and and uh, so we, we, a lot of interesting information um, was uh, found from doing this exercise, you know, that helped us to dig down a little further into maybe why we were experiencing some of the difficulties we were. Um, you know, what really stood out was some of the lack of confidence that staff was experiencing and, you know, not having the knowledge of what the resources were that were available. Um, communication was definitely a, a barrier, and even just not understanding what the client goals were uh, associated to social media. Um, we also found that time management and not having the time to to um, pr participate in social leisure activities was definitely a huge impact. Next slide. So this is what our um, satisfaction survey looked like. It was very simplistic. The individuals in our program uh, required brain injury. So we wanted to keep it simple, but we wanted to ensure that they were able to verbalize, you know, in a way that was simplistic. So, you know, we asked four questions. We wanted to know, was the amount of social activities available, was it enough? So they could circle if they liked it, if they were or, or dislike the amount of social activities available. The other question was the duration of social leisure activities. Was it long enough? 
and then the types of um, and variety of social activities available. And so, like I said, it was a, just a simplistic way to figure out if they were if they liked it, were neutral or disliked that. And then they had an opportunity to verbalize any um, feedback in the last question. Is there anything else you would like to share? Next slide. So we determined some of the root causes, and I didn't get into too great detail here, um, but I did already mention that um, some of the root causes were definitely around staff being uncomfortable with clients, with the clients due to lack of rapport. Some of the clients here are, are have challenging behaviors or challenging needs, and and it kind of intimidated um, some of the staff to be able to get out in the community or, or do some one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and then there was a lack of scheduled opportunity, so we didn't have that, that initial structure to um, shape the, the opportunities. And then, as I previously mentioned, um, the transportation is definitely a barrier for the individuals that require the accessible transportation. Next slide. So this is our run chart for our satisfaction survey. And we didn't quite reach our goal, but we definitely have a, seen an improvement. And this was done every three weeks. So the week of July 2nd, the week of July 23rd, the week of August 13th, and then just last week. So there's been a definite improvement based on the, the satisfaction survey. Next slide. And then this was our balancing measure as far as from our incident reports around elopement. And there, there was um, definitely a decrease over the past uh, four months. There has been no elopement. Uh, we can, you know, we're going to continue um, collecting this data to see if this is something that's sustainable in the sense that, you know, this was over the summer months. We were uh, quite active in pursuing social leisure opportunities. Does that have something to do with it? Um, did it have anything to do with any other factors? So we're going to continue to monitor this because it will be interesting to see if this continues to, to be um, a, a, a situation that has been extinguished. Next slide. So this is our run chart for our responsive behaviors based on our incident report. And again, this is quite variable. That is, you know, there it's up and down, fluctuates. And again, uh, it, the individuals in our program do have acquired brain injury, and, and some of the responsive behaviors aren't necessarily associated to, you know, social leisure aspects not being met. It could be a variety of different reasons, but um, we did definitely notice there were, you know, fluctuations. And again, this will be another um, uh, area that we'll continue to monitor and see if there's any improvement. Next chart. So change ideas, uh, so increase social leisure op opportunities. Uh, so activities are now, were occurring uh, weekly. And as I stated earlier, we did implement a leisure calendar in May. And um, now the activities are scheduled on a daily basis. Uh, the activities vary to simple activities like movie nights, game nights, crafts, uh, time spent on the patio, and then there's the more elaborate activities that require more planning, things like pic the, you know, uh, picnics, uh, the local Canadian Lake at exhibition, car shows, uh, fun Fridays at some of our other assisted living sites. Um, what we did observe was staff were um, incorporating leisure opportunities on a spontaneous basis and not just doing what was scheduled. Um, they seem to be buying into the importance of providing these opportunities. Uh, the bi-weekly house meetings and the satisfaction surveys provided us with information on what is valuable to the clients and what is what is working and what is not. So that feedback um, from the, the clients has been very useful in this process. Um, the timing of this uh, starting of this project with the clients was perfect as it's much easier to access the community here in Thunder Bay in the summer months. Uh, and it's important um, to keep the momentum going and to be creative as we head into the colder weather and winter months. Next slide. So lessons learned. So what are we most excited about? We're definitely most excited about keeping the momentum going. Um, it's very important not to lose everything we have gained during this process. 
Um, and then planning for the winter months will be important. Uh, just being really creative and trying to figure out, um, you know, what we can do that um, based on how difficult it is in the winter to, to, to access the community based on um, how cold it can be and even accessing the sidewalks when there's a lot of snow and what have you. Uh, so what are the factors enabling uh, our, pro our projects progress and pace? So as I stated, poor weather impacts our ability to get out in the community if, if transportation is not available. And therapeutic rapport is essential for success. So we are especially having to be mindful of that when we hire new staff. Next slide. So what would we do differently? Uh, I think we would, you know, we were kind of jumping ahead sometimes, you know, we, we maybe would want to get more data before implementing change ideas, maybe be more systematic in our approach. Um, the, as far as the project itself, the timing of the project was not necessarily ideal as far as summer va vacations impacting our ability to do things in a timely manner. And that's more specific with, we like this, this actual report, we felt a little rushed to get it uh, in on time and what have you, just based on vacations and, and what have you. Um, the data from the client satisfaction survey was somewhat skewed by one client as he does not rely on staff to meet his social leisure needs. Um, in the future, maybe we will only include individuals who are actually impacted by what we're trying to achieve. That was just a, a food for thought. Um, so as far as impact on our organization beyond the project and project team, uh, we did note that during this process, staff burnout was identified you know, around anything extra feels like too much. And this would be an excellent QI to focus on for the organization as far as next steps. Next slide. Oh, I think, well, anyways, our last slide is about um, next steps to progress improvement. And we want to implement what we learned over the winter, winter months and continue with house meetings and client satisfaction surveys to ensure we're on the right track and maintaining what we, the work that we've already started. Uh, we do want to share what was learned with other programs within Visno, especially we have two other assisted living sites who also sometimes experience some of the difficulties that we have. So it would be valuable to share with the other programs and maybe they can um, benefit from some of the stuff that we've already done. Uh, we do want to survey the staff to ensure that our change ideas are in fact meaningful and not just make assumptions that, you know, that there has been an improvement. We're really um, interested in finding out what the, all the staff's feedback is. And then, you know, we want to, I personally want to encourage another program maybe to focus on a QI around addressing staff burnout. And that's our presentation. Thanks so much, Betty. Thank Thanks you. Much. And uh, great presentation, and, and thanks for sticking with us through the, uh, the technological issues here. It's uh, somewhat of a, a trend with Equip sometimes, but um, great presentation, and very excited that you're thinking of the next QI project, possibly looking at burnout. That's uh, that'd be a pretty neat project to take on. Um, no, one, I, one quick I also, question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, you go ahead, Mike. I've got a question for it too. Uh, just one quick question I was going to ask, and with respect to the um, the process map, you mentioned you did a, a process map for both um, the client and for staff, and I was wondering if there was any sort of ahas or m anything that really stood out from that, because it can be a really neat process, kind of comparing those different perspectives. Yeah, as we were going through the process, I, I, I definitely remember, uh, you know, there was light bulbs going off, and, and we invited, because um, it was just the team and um, uh, the individual that the client that had come in, and but we invited others, you know, because it's in my office, it's still up here, I'm looking at it right now. Uh, we invited the, all the team that works here at McKellar to, to, to pop in, take a look, add, add a sticky to where they, they we might have missed something, and um, you know, it just it really focused our attention on, you know, the pain points. There are times of the day that, you know, are are very difficult. You know, that they're they're very high um, amount of care and 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 um, work that needs to be done. And you know, so it just kind of gave us a, a better perspective, especially in the evening. You know, as that's where the leisure calendar came into play as far as you know, scheduling some of that and not necessarily elaborate things. Like I was saying, some of those simple things that, 
you know, some of the people appreciate that, you know, something simple as a, having a movie night made a huge difference. Going out on, on, we have a beautiful balcony patio here, you know, just spending time, you know, out on the patio enjoying the day because our summer is too short. <laughs> Let's enjoy it. Thank you. Uh, it's it's Debbie. Betty, I was just wondering, one of the things that I know that you had done right up front is, is you had some data from your staff in terms of satisfaction, and I wonder if that's been repeated in your area and if there's any change in that as as well, especially based on a client's feeling that their needs are being better met. Well, that, um, as I had stated, we do want to survey the staff, just specifically here at McKellar. Uh, usually through our accreditation process, we do revisit the work-life pulse survey, but we want to do something more specific just around McKellar and asking some of those key questions about, you know, what are some of the differences that staff are noticing, you know, and it might help around that next steps of staff burnout, you know, because like you said, we don't want to make assumptions that if all the work that we've done here has made a difference, so we do want to ask some of those key questions. Mm -hmm. But no, we haven't yeah. did it yet. That's our plan. Okay, super. Thank you. Nice work. Two questions, uh, two questions in the chat box here. The first one, I think, is uh, is a question for me, and that is, are the handouts and slides available? Uh, yes, they are in your handouts um, section of the Go To Control Panel. You'll see you can you can click that down, and there should be handouts, including the slides for these presentations today. The second question is from Ivan. And I think it's directed for you, Betty. Uh, he says, hi, uh, I was just Googling the program as you were speaking, as we also run a home for individuals with an, uh, with an ABI here in North Bay. It appears that the address for McKellar is on the sixth floor of a larger building. If so, do clients of the ABI home have opportunities to participate in other broader social activities in the building at large, or would they need to be accompanied? That's his first question. Right. So yes, that is correct. We we are um, within a bigger structure. Just as an interesting note, McKellar um, used to be a, a hospital, and uh, so it was all renovated. So we have the whole sixth floor here, and the rest of the floors are mainly senior living, and um, they do all kinds of different activities uh, for for the seniors, and we're invited as well. There's been like you know, music violinists that have come in. There's been all kinds of, uh, you know, coffee and tea situations. So we are invited, and some of the individuals enjoy, yeah, the card games, like all kinds of other things that the the that's available to us. Thank you, uh, Ivan. Second part to his question is, uh, he's also curious to know how you classified elopement, whether they left the building or were just gone from the sixth floor but could be elsewhere in the building? Well, it's kind of both. It's depending on how quickly um, the staff were able to find them. So if they found them quickly, they were still in the building. If some a little bit of time had gone by, they had already left the building. So it, it just it was a matter of how, how quickly the staff were able to find them. One individual who, um, he was he's checked on every 30 minutes. So within that 30 minutes, if he didn't have eyes on, it depended on how far he could go. Great, thank you. Hopefully that answers uh, your question, Ivan. Oh, uh, for your stats, would elopement include those who were still in the building? Yes. Ivan said, yeah, yes it would. Yeah, the reason being is that we, we like I was saying, we have um, the whole sixth floor, and we, we're not a locked facility, you know, per se, but we people don't have access to us. So once you leave the floor, you know, it, it's not part of that safe environment anymore. And this person requires one-on-one -on -one support. So as soon as they would leave our floor, that's an elopement because anytime they leave the floor, they're at risk. Great. Thank you very much. Okay.